Recording. All right, everybody, welcome to Music Distribution Week 3. We have Juan Rodriguez from uh, Full Sail. He's alumni, and he's going to talk to you guys about digital marketing and advertising stuff because that's what he does. Um, I'll let you give yourself a more formal introduction, Juan. Okay, okay. So, hi, Daniel, Kevin, and Warren. Uh, I graduated from Full Sail a few years ago. Oh, well, a year ago, but I started my company here in Colombia. Uh, I work with artists like I'm sure you don't know, but um, they're pretty big here in, in Colombia. And we work with Universal Music in some aspects. Uh, what we do is digital marketing for them, uh, especially through Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. So today I'm going to explain you some, like, some of, like, very good tips for for Facebook, Instagram, and Facebook ads. First of all, I would like to know if any one of you, like, it's an artist or something, like, or promotes his music. Just right there. <laughs> yeah, um, actually, Warren goes by David, and he is an artist. Let me open up my chat. Okay. Sometimes it takes him a minute to, to type, too. So you sometimes, yeah, there you go. Okay, cool, cool. So this is like super useful for artists, or if you're gonna, or, or if you're gonna like promote other artists. I'm working with a, a guy called Pipe Bueno. Uh, let me show it to you. One second. Um, he's like music, like traditional music from Colombia. Uh, it's this guy. So Pipe Bueno, then you have, he has 4 million likes on Facebook, and then you have Farina also, it's like reggaeton. Oh, Kevin and, knows then, <laughs> Oh, cool, cool. And so Farina, this is the one. No, it's not, I'm searching for the, like, real fan page. This is the real fan page. And I work with HTV um, with a, with a, um, it's like an award show called Los Premios Hit. So, this is it. Um, this is the, like, the clients we have right now. So, first of all, um, if you're going to start, like, promoting an artist on Facebook or any social media platform, you have to know who are your, who is your target market, yes? And Facebook has a very, very, very good tool for that. That's called Facebook Insights. So in order to access there, you have to go to Facebook slash ads slash manage, yes? Uh, just stop me if you like, if you would like to ask something, so just don't worry. Okay. Uh, there, you, you can click on the upside part and click on audience insights, yes. So let's say I'm an indie artist and I fuse electronic music such as, uh, I don't know, like Deep House with in folk music or rock music. Uh, and my band is going to be called the Full Sailors of Orlando. So I just want to know who is like who is going to buy my music and who who do I have to promote music to? Yes. Uh, so I mean, like the full sale, the full sailors from Orlando uh, are going to be released on New York, Orlando, LA, and New Orleans. Yes. I think like that's the best place I can release my music, and I just love those places. So I'm going to start releasing my music there. In this platform. I can start uh, start researching who is my target audience and what do they like and what do they do, who are they. So the first thing I'm going to do is select uh, the places where I'm going to target and where I'm going to like show my ads and show all of my music. So as I said before, we're going to select New York, LA. Um, Orlando, yes, and New Orleans. You can do it worldwide, yes? You can do it like 
uh, if you want, you can do it in India or I don't know Berlin or Paris, whatever you want. You just select your audience. Yes, there. Then you select uh, what what you think is like the preferred age of your genre. Yes. So let's say if, if it is an electronic music artist, it's going to be 18 to let's say 45 because I don't I don't want to cut anyone out. I just want to know maybe who likes my thing. Yes. And here is where I can get a very very like deep informa very deep full information about who I'm targeting to, yes? So the full sailors of Orlando, my my fiction fictional band, um, has like a similar similar sound to some artists. So let's say Zhu, uh, Zhu is like an artist I, I love a lot. It's electronic music. Um, maybe Flume, that's an electronic music artist. Maybe you have uh, Chet Faker, that's like a new indie artist. Uh, Royal Blood, a great uh, like rock band. Uh, Milk Chance. Uh, do you know Halsey? Halsey is a great new artist. What? Someone's not on mute. <laughs> I wouldn't watch this shit. I wouldn't watch this shit. <laughs> Okay, so you have Halsey, then you have, you start just typing like similar similar artists to the artists you want to promote or yourself, yes? Oliver Heldens, um, sorry, uh, So you, you just make like a list of 20 or uh, 30,000 people, uh, sorry, 20 or 30 artists that are similar to your artist and you select them here on interests. So now I have, I start to see like where is my main audience, yes, on Facebook. So from all of the people that likes this fan page from 18 to 45, like most of the people has between 25 and 34 years old. So that means that like if I'm going to release a new album or if I'm going to promote something, my main target audience is going to be from 25 to 34 years old. Yes, so 18 to 24 is not going to be that useful. Yes, if I if I don't have like a big a big budget, I'm going to start from 25 to 34 years old. Yes, uh, so let's could um, let's could 35 years old, an app. Now you can click on page likes, and when you go there, you really uh, you realize something super super useful. That's a fan page that my target audience is gonna look for and is my like target audience is gonna be interested in. So Electric Daisy Carnival. So if I'm gonna release my artist, maybe it would be a good option to get booked to this festival, Electric Daisy Carnival. Or maybe if I wanna collaborate or make a remix of some artist, I will I will make a remix of Chet Faker, Halsey, Disclosure, Diplo. DXX, Calvin Harris uh, set. Uh, also, if if I am looking like for for someone to cover my event or someone to make a blog about me, I will go to Vice because most of my target audience is 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 researching about Vice and is is a fan of Vice. Yes. Also, it's very like it's very interesting that. Um, between the four series I selected, the series that's the most like that likes the most my kind of artist is New York. So I will go to New York. Yes? I muted her. Okay. So how do you get your categories to all be music related? Um it's just like it's just when you select this artist like Chet Faker, Flume Halsey, um I, I don't have to select the categories. Facebook actually shows me what what those people likes about like in Facebook, you know? So you don't have to select anything here. You don't have to select categories. Like that's what people likes there, you know? Um, I don't know. Like if you want to if you want to get this kind of categories, you just have to select music categories here in interests. Um, 
I don't know if that's if that solves your question. <laughs> yeah, you um, can't you can't really you can't get all your categories to be music related. Yeah, it just shows you the top categories. So that way you can target people that um, because for some reason that target market primarily likes those things. So it's going to give you all these options that then you can target those different types of pages. It's kind of like lifestyle marketing. Exactly, exactly. Yes. So also, for example, it's super, super interesting that new, like people in my target audience likes New York Knicks. So maybe releasing some branded song around that that sport team will be a good idea. Yeah. Or or maybe dressing my artist with H and M clothing will be a good idea. You know. Or doing a post, doing a post about that, right? Like the artist doing exactly. about it. Exactly, exactly. So it's just like you start to, to know who is your target audience and you don't have to guess about like, okay, so it's a rock band, maybe they like uh, hardcore stuff. No, you just know what fan page they like. Also, as I said before, you can click on location and you can see that my main audience is in New York. 67% uh, of them are in New York. Uh, then it's uh, LA and then it's Orlando so maybe it's not a good idea for example like if I'm releasing a new album it's a good idea to go to New York or to move to New York or if like if my artist is living in Orlando I will move with him to New York that's a good like a good um, information also you can click on top languages or like many different options there and you realize your main audience speaks English, like not not most of them, like they don't they don't, they don't speak Spanish. So um, that's also useful to know in which language are you gonna develop, develop your brand. Now you can click on activity. So on activity, Facebook shows you uh, where is your target audience accessing to Facebook from. So, for example, my target audience is accessing uh, from desktop and mobile, and not so much from from desktop only. So, a good option would be to optimize my my content for mobile, and yes, not so much for desktop. Uh, the access from from Android phones, uh, iPhones. And computers, so maybe it's a good idea for a music video. You know, if in your music video you're gonna show um, a cell phone, you're gonna show an iPhone because it's gonna resonate way more with your target audience. I have a question for you. Yes. These numbers down here, like it says 63%, and then it says 28%, but they're the same level. One's thicker though. Like, why is that have different numbers, but they look the same height. Do you know? Which one? Um, the second one is 63% and then the yes. fifth one is 28%. For instance. Okay, because there are two different categories. So first one is like where is the people accessing to, uh, to Facebook? So it's accessing through a mobile phone. Yes? But then the second category is the, the brand. The brand of the, of the mobile phone they're accessing from yes so there are two different categories the okay. first one that's where where are they accessing from that's desktop or mobile and then the second category is iPhone or iPod and Android whatever oh, okay so it's so, breaking it down more yes so it's not related so okay. that's why the two bars shows like shows like that yeah that's a weird way for them to do it <laughs> yeah yes they, they should appear like I don't know like this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, this is super, super, super useful. You can click on household, and it's gonna show uh, how much money they earn. So you know, like how to price your album, how to price your merchandising, how to price your tickets, how to price your meet and greets, how to price everything. So you know, most of them are earn from fifty thousand to seventy five uh, seventy five thousand dollars per year. I think that's like a like like a medium class I would say. Mm -hmm. And then and then not, like not a lot of them 
earn more than $75,000. So you will price your products around like a medium, medium class um, consumer. That's yes. really cool. <laughs> yes, it's super, super cool. Um, also, you have a, like a breakdown of in which, like, which, in which category they spend the most. They spend the most on, well, bank cards, travel and entertainment, uh, gas stores, and upscale department stores. So it's cool to know that. Uh, and they. Most of them pay with cash. Oh wow! So for, yes, so it's super cool. So you, you will know, like for example, if you're gonna like, I don't know, if you're, if you're gonna charge for a um, for a merch product, you will have a, a change in your merch store. I don't know. It's a good way to like start to um, structure your project. Also, you have purchase behavior here. So. So you know in which products they're spending the most. They're spending the most on health and beauty, clothing, food and drink, and well, they have pet products. So it's like it starts to give you good ideas about you, what you can do with your project, with your music project, uh, like a merch, a merch um, merchandising, like using merchandising for this kind of project will be a good idea because most of my target audience is buying clothing, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, also, it shows you which, uh, which cars are they using. Hybrid. Exactly, hybrid. So for a music video, it would be a good option to use a, a hybrid alternative well, a car or to partner with a brand that makes those kind of cars, you know? It's going like, to relate to your target audience. Will you explain something real quick? Um, and actually, he has a question too. What um, what is you have the blue line and then you have the gray line? Do you know the difference between those two? What that yes. Mean? So um, what Facebook does is that from all of the locations I selected, so LA or London, New Orleans, New York, he creates like a a pool. Okay. So he says like. The average person in LA or London, New Orleans, and New York acts like the gray line. You know? So most of the people that live in these locations it does what the gray line says. Okay. Says, yes. And then it compares uh, compares it to what the blue line is. To your like to your actual target audience is. Do you oh, get okay. it? Mm -hmm. So it's location versus your target audience. Exactly, exactly, hmm. exactly. Interesting. And then, like, I don't know, does that, does that solve your question? Yeah, yeah, thank you. And okay. Kevin has a question. I guess he's having trouble with um, let, Locations. Him, more than one location on his, I don't know if you can help him with that or not. It might be. Uh, definitely. Just click on, on the legal X, remote, remove. And just start removing removing locations and try to add more locations. So let's try with I don't know uh, Berlin and Paris. You just start to type there. If that doesn't work, uh, <laughs> okay, it's not allowing to target to different different countries. So you have to do it in, on the same country. Maybe that's that's the problem. Could be. That could be. Um, if it is in the same country and it's not allowing you to target to different locations, just try to enter to the audience insights. I do know so, about that actually. Um, Google, you, Google Chrome. You can usually target different countries, but you can't target different cities if you're going to do more than one country. So okay. you would have to target United States. And you know what I mean, but you can't target New York and Paris. Yes, you can do that. But Kevin is saying that he tried only in the U.S. and it's not allowing to do it. So I don't know. Try try to enter from Google Chrome or refresh the uh, the web page. Yeah, it could even be a problem with your ad manager. Like I'm having problems with my ad manager. 
So I had to message Facebook. So it could be just a glitch. You never know. Yes, you never know. <laughs> um, no, let me try with like opening the the website again. So, call you, uh, let's say New York or London. Okay, maybe you have to restart your navigator or something because mine is working well. So I don't know. I think that's the problem. It, it normally allows you to do that. So I don't know. Thanks, Juan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, after we target all of our audience and we know what kind of things they like, what kind of things they do, who are they, what age are they, you can save your audience here and you, you definitely, like, you're definitely going to know what are you going to do with your money and your budget when you're going to target some audiences. So, this is like the first part I always do when I'm like when I'm working with an artist at the beginning or when I, I, I'm trying to promote a new artist is just go to audience insights and know who who is their audience, what do they do and everything. After I do that I optimize Facebook or the fan page they're working with so so we have like a better a better structure with their fan page. So I'm gonna just give uh, give you guys an example of what, 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 what can you do in order to optimize your Facebook for for your audiences. So let's say we're gonna create our fan page called the Full Sailors of Orlando. Yes, you go and create your fan page. <laughs> and So, at the beginning, wait a second, wait a second. At the beginning of your fan page, you can go to settings and you can, do, you can do the next thing. First of all, you have to click on visitor post and disable post by other people on the page. Why do I recommend to do this? Because sometimes you have a, you know like a bad picture of your band and you don't want someone else to blow like to blow it to your fan page or you you don't want like bad comments or on your fan page you only want like official official posts on your fan page also a uh, news feed audience and visibility for post so you can click on that and I'm gonna explain you what does it do when you click on that, you can go to pages, well, to your norm, normal fan page, and when I, when I, like when I make a post, I can click on this little dot here, and I can select who, like who is gonna see my post, and it's only going to show my post to those people. That's super useful. Is for example. You have a very big fan page. Are you, you're gonna have a concert in in New York, but you don't want people from LA to see that post because it's not gonna be very relevant. So you just click New York here, and um, it's only going to show that post to the people in New York, and it's not going to show the post to the people in LA. So it's super super useful. And the way you can like access to this is through settings and clicking on the on the little option I gave you. That's newsfeed audience and visibility proposed. Now, this is like this tip I'm going to give you super useful because sometimes you create a fan page, maybe some 
internet blog create uh, a piece of content about you, but they then they cannot tag you. And at the beginning, I made so many mistakes with that because, like, I had big artists and other people weren't able to tag them on their posts. So in order to be sure they can tag them on their post, you have to go to ta uh, tagging ability and click on all other users to tag photos and videos. Yes. Oh. You're speaking of that. I didn't, oh, I didn't know about that setting. Oh. It's super useful, yes. Wow. It's super useful. <laughs> also, um, you have posts in, multi in multiple languages. I have seen this like thousands of times in the electronic music industry and also uh, bands that tour a lot, yes? So what happens is that you click on this, save changes, and now when you create a post, it's going to happen the next thing. Let's say, um, let's say my new album is going to be released, is going to be released in multiple languages, or is going to be released worldwide. So I want people in the United States to get the message, but at the same time, people in France to understand what I'm saying and to get like a more comfortable approach to them. So I write my post in English. So hey, here are my new album, my new album. Sorry, here are my new album. And then you click on write post in another language. You select English. So people that speaks uh, speaks English is gonna see the post in English, but then I can redo the um, the post in another language. So for example, where is it? It's not our, so for example, Afrikaans because I can do that. I don't know why. So the people that speaks Afrikaans is gonna see your post in Afrikaans. <laughs> And it's a super like it's, it's a great tool if you yeah, want to that's like really cool. yes, especially when like touring bands because I like I have a friend actually that that graduated from Full Sail and he tours a lot from like in Europe so he also have to post like in French and then in German and then in uh, Dutch and creates a mess so it's he just posts in four different languages and the problem is solved yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, um, a final setting you can like how, like something you can do in order to optimize a little bit more your fan page is you can go to apps and then you can select notes and add app. Yes. In add app, what's gonna happen is that like with this with this tool, you're gonna be able to create notes. So what are notes? Notes are like it's a super super cool like way of creating creating like notes or creating messages about your fan page without doing the same like typical post that's about like just a picture or just a video. So let me show you how it works. You go to settings, again you go to apps, you go to go to app and then you create edu Select as note. You select a picture from wherever you like. You have your picture, and it's like having Tumblr or having like a blog post in your fan page. You can say like um, the full sail, full sailors from Orlando. Yes, the full sailors from Orlando in New York. Yes. Then you create your blog, and let me see how can I post it. Because it's not adding. Wait a second. Let me go to another. Let's post it again. Sorry. The full sailors from the full sailors. From of Orlando, so from Orlando. Settings apps. Let's 
Sorry, it's not allowing me to go down. I don't know why. Okay, now I can do it. So when I create the post, it's gonna look like this. Oh, wait a second. It's like you didn't post anything. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have to go down, then you click on publish. And it's gonna look like this. It's super cool. It's gonna look like this. It's like a, it's like Tumblr but on Facebook. Wow. So it looks very very cool. Like if you have very good content, it's gonna look it's gonna be super super useful because people get tired of the same pictures or videos or just like this, the typical content. So this is like a great way to create a new piece of content for your fan page or your artist. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. After I do this with the artist, like first of all, I go to audience insights. I analyze what the audience and my target market is. Then I go and optimize the fan page. And after, after I do all of this, I start creating audiences. So I'm going to explain what's an audience. Sometimes when you go to Facebook, you see some Facebook ads. Yes, I don't know if you have seen some Facebook ads. Please like type yes or no or whatever. Yeah, type yes or no, guys. Come on, wake up. <laughs> okay. okay, 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 perfect. So, for example, I have um, a Facebook ad right here from Osla. Like it's a, a Skrillex label, yes, and it says it says sponsored. It's in a sponsor ad. So it's it's very interesting how they get in my news feed. Like Oslo doesn't get to all of the news feed of everybody. They just get to people interest in their target, like in their message. And how they generate that is through creating a target audience. And you created that target audience here. In Facebook slash ads slash manager. So in order to get to the right audience and not spend like in order, like in order to throw your message to, to the right people, you have to give Facebook information about who is your target audience. You do that by creating audiences. So in order to create an audience, you have to go to Facebook slash ads slash manager. There, you click on ads manager, audiences, and create new audience. Or save new save new audience yes save audience. So let's say uh, the full sailors from Orlando are going to have like are going to target to professionals of the music industry yes. We just won a Grammy and we, like we want to get to those professionals of the music industry with an ad like this one like the Osla ad. So I'm gonna teach you a very helpful in order to get those people or those professionals in the music industry. First of all, you name the audience, so professionals um, from the music industry. Then you select where you want to target the ad. I want to target the ad to professionals of the music industry of the United States. And then there is like this is the interesting part. You click on detail targeting. You click on browse. Demographics. Work. And then you click on employers. What's gonna happen is that I'm gonna type different companies in the music industry, and each time I type one like one company, Facebook is gonna show me how many people in that company that works in that company I can target and I can show my ads to. So for example, Universal Music Group. So 37,000 people works at Universal Music Group. And from all of those 37,000 people that works at Universal Music Group in the whole world, 2,200 work at United States, yes? 
And when I show my ad, when I create an ad, that's like the next thing I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, people that works at Universal Music Group is going to see my ad. So it's super, super useful. Uh, you, have, you can also uh, target people that works at Spotify. Yes? You can target people that works at Sony Music. Yes? Uh, you can target people that works at Vice, at whatever company in the music industry you're, ta you're targeting to. So, how does Facebook know that someone is working in that company? It's very easy. So, for example, I have a friend uh, that works at Spotify. So, he writes in his Facebook, or he puts in his Facebook, Facebook that he works at Spotify, as you can see there. So when he puts that information in Facebook, Facebook uh, in, uh, like puts him in a big, big um, database where advertisers can access to. And that's why I can target to people that works at Spotify. Um, I can target to whatever company I want to, you know, like workers of that, employers of that company, sorry, or people that works at that company. So uh, the the full the full sailors from Orlando, because I didn't remember the name, sorry, uh, just won a Grammy, and I'm gonna target those people. So I already created my target audience in Facebook, and I just click on create audience. Yes. Now, as you can see, I have my target audience here in my Facebook Ads Manager. That's the platform that Facebook used to create Facebook ads. Now, I, I have the target audience now, but then I have to target them with a message. You know, you have to reach them with a message. So I'm going to go to my fan page that's the full sailors of Orlando, well, from Orlando. And I'm going to create a post for that target audience I just created. So, for example, uh, I just uh, we just won a Grammy. Yes, just won a Grammy. If you are a music industry executive, you should check us out. That's a very targeted message, you know. If you work in the music industry and you see that, you're gonna be like, okay, maybe this could be interesting. Um, you create your post on Facebook. And then you go to your ads manager. That's like the platform where, where you create all of your ads. When you first enter to Ads Manager, it's going to look like this after you created your uh, target audience. Now you're going to click on Create Ad. And I'm going to explain you a few things you can do here. When you create an ad, you have many multiple objectives and many multiple things you can do. I'm just going to explain a few of them because like there are too many and not all of them are going to be useful for the music industry. For the music industry, one of the most important objectives and things you can choose on Facebook ads is boost your posts. So when you select that and then you select this post uh, through a, like a way I'm going to show you later, this post is going to appear on other people's uh, news feeds. In other, other people news feeds. So it's gonna be like the Osla Osla ad we just saw. I'm, I'm just looking for it. So it's gonna be well, it's gonna appear on other on other people news feeds. Now you have another option. For example, if your fa fan page just started and you don't have any followers, you're gonna want to maybe promote it a little bit and get a uh, fan page likes. Yes, so you can choose promote your page. When you click on promote your page and create an ad with that objective, um, Facebook is going to charge you and and you're going to get likes for each time Facebook charges you. Also, you can have race attendance at your event. 
So for example, you create a Facebook event and you want to promote it, you will click on that one, yes? When you click on that one, uh, you can actually pay Facebook to get people to your uh, event, yes? It's super weird. Can you uh, charge and the people? What? Can you charge people on there, on Raise Your Attendance? Uh, no, you cannot charge people. Okay. Then you will have you will have to take them to your website and then charge them. Right. Okay. Yeah. Then you have uh, get video views. So, for example, if you release a new music video and you upload it to Facebook, you could pay Facebook to show it to other people on their on their uh, video news feed. So, I'm going to show you an example. Uh, here I have the video I just clicked on, you know, like I choose to see that video, but when I started to scroll to the left, like to other, other recommended videos, I have, for example, this kind of videos, and as you can see, it says sponsored. So it's not a video that I choose to watch, it's a video that Facebook or an ad advertiser is making me to watch, yes? So you have those four objectives in Facebook ads that like are, are useful for the music industry. Hmm. Um, in this case, we want to promote to the music industry executives the fact that we just won a Grammy, so we're going to select Boost your post, yes? And doo -doo -doo, then you click, you click like um, Grammy Award for Music Industry Executives, yes? Now, on the, on the part like upward part, you are going to click on Use the Saved Audience and you're going to have all of the audience you created before. In this case, do you remember we created the audience that, like, uh, professionals that work at Spotify, by Sony Music, etc. So I don't have to click or create a new audience, I just can have it here. No, you can click on placements also. So what's placements? Placements is where your ad is going to appear. In this case, um, you have many options. Let me show you. You have Instagram, because as you may know, Facebook purchased Instagram. You also have Facebook, and you also have Audience Network. What's Audience Network? Audience Network is like a series of apps and video games, online video games, that Facebook purchased. So sometimes you can get ads from Facebook on those apps in your cell phone. Um, I don't recommend like using Audience Network because it's not very useful for the music industry. And also if you're just starting your project or your fan page or whatever, I wouldn't choose Instagram because you want to focus all of your budget on Facebook. On Facebook, you have two options. You can say Facebook, I only want my ads to appear on my newsfeed or I want the ads to appear on the newsfeed and also on the right column of, of people profiles. So an ad on the like right column will be will be this one. This is an example of an ad that will appear there. Kez, are you, why are you unmuted? Did you unmute yourself? I'm gonna mute him again. Uh, so answering to Danielle's question, yes, Audience Network is or like, like other websites that are connected to Facebook. Uh, for example, Candy Crush. Sometimes you're like you're gonna see an ad from Facebook on Candy Crush. Yes. Um. Now. Um. Wait a second. Do you hear me? Okay. Now, um, I recommend not using the right column because almost nobody watch that or sees this kind of ads. We're just scrolling down. <laughs> And these kind of ads are not very useful. Yeah, they don't, don't even like show it. on like mobile, right? Yes, exactly. And they don't they don't look native, you know, native. They look like an actual ad. So I don't know, like I haven't seen a lot of return on investment on those kind of ads. Like I don't use them a lot. I just use bits. 
in this case, I have to select it. Now, after we selected which audience we want to target and in which location we want to target, we're going to select how many money do we want to spend on the ad we're making. So you have two options. You can pay a daily budget. For example, I want to spend $5 per, per day. Or you can say to Facebook, like, look, man, I just have uh, $100, so I just can't spend $100. Um, it is up to you what you select. You know, like sometimes you have you have a budget, uh, like a limited budget, so you're gonna select select lifetime budget. Sometimes you have a uh, unlimited budget, so you just select daily budget. If you work, if you, if you're gonna work in Sony Music or any like music industry agency in the future, you're gonna select daily budget because they have like very 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 large budgets. In this case, uh, I'm gonna say like I want to spend 100 or 1 million dollars in my campaign, yes, yeah, my daily budget. And then I'm gonna select when is my ad going to start to run. So if I select uh, August 20, I want to start my ad at let's say 2 p.m. And then I'm gonna select when I want the ad to stop, yes. Uh, I want to stop the ad on the 27. Something very important that, like, I can, I made so many mistakes with this is that when you create an ad and select the time, for example, here 11 p.m., the ad is going to start to run three hours after you select the time. Yes, it's going to take a while to Facebook to deliver to deliver your message. So, for example, if if you're going to work for a company in the future and the company asks you to make an ad for 2 p.m., they want the ad, the ad to start showing up at 2 p.m., you should create the ad three hours before. Super important that you like take that into mind. That's really strange. Yes, yes, it's super strange. I don't know why that happens, but when it, like, I have talked to many people that work in Facebook and they say it's because they have like a huge amount of ads. So they cannot, like the system cannot process them very fast and it takes three hours to the <laughs> system to process, to process that. You should yes, change that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's weird. Um, now, uh, you have something very interesting here. So it says optimization for ad delivery. You have three options, post engagement, engagement, impressions, and daily nick reach. So, uh, this is a, like a little bit difficult concept, so a little bit difficult to understand it. But what happens is that Facebook wants you wants to spend your money as fast as it can. You know, Facebook wants advertisers to spend all of their money as fast as they can. So what happens is that, for example, you release an ad, and it reaches to 100 people. From the 100 people that sees your ad, only 20 people clicks on the ad or says, I like this ad or comments on the ad, yes? So when you click in post engagement, it's going to happen the next. So, sorry. So you, from the 20 people that likes your ad, Facebook creates a profile of those people. It's going to say, like, these people likes cats and these people is a uh, 19 year old or these people uh, lie it's single so he, uh, Facebook creates a profile and it's going to start to deliver the ad to people similar to, to to the people that click on the on the on the post it's something so super weird but when you click in post engagement your your ad is going to start to deliver more to people that actually is going to like your, your, your ad or is going to comment on your ad. You can also optimize your ad for impressions. So it's just going to appear on Facebook on, on people's news feed, but it's not going to matter if they say, like, I like the post or comment on the post. On my personal experience, I recommend you to click on post engagement because you don't want a post like an empty post, you know, like that says like nobody liked that post or nobody commented on the post. So post engagement is going to help you. 
to, to do that. Um, in bid amount, th this is something else that's super weird, but you can choose how much you want to pay Facebook for your ad. It's like, w when I first saw it, it was like, because you say, you say to Facebook, like, for me, that the fact that someone say, I like this post, cost uh, $200 or cost $1, whatever, yes? And Facebook does the next, the next process, yes? So, in order to explain it, we're going to say, like, I'm going to target people, uh, like, like people that likes uh, Justin Bieber, you know? So my artist is going to target the audience that likes Justin Bieber. And I'm paying $1 in order to reach that audience. And then I have, like, other advertiser, for example, Brandy, is promoting another artist and also wants to reach that audience. So she's paying $2. So it's going to happen a process that's, that's called bidding. And because she's paying more for the same audience, Brandy's ad is going to appear before than my, my ad. So my ads are not going to have a reach. I don't know if you get that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense for me. Does anybody have any questions so far, you guys? <laughs> okay. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, how to choose how much to pay per engagement? Well, Facebook gives you a recommendation here of how much you should pay. This is in this is in Colombian pesos, so it looks like a lot, but actually it's like one dollar. Um, and for example, if if you want, like, if you have a big budget, you're gonna have you're gonna have to spend more money. Yes. Okay. So Kadian say you don't get it. Okay. No, he said he does. Just... He does. He's saying no. I get it so far. Okay. So no, comma. I get it so far. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you have a, an artist that has a big budget, you're gonna you're gonna spend a lot of money. You want like you want to win over all of the other ad advertisers. So you're gonna select what Facebook is recommending you here. Yes. So if Facebook says you have to pay three dollars per engagement, pay three dollars. If you don't have a big a big budget, just I just do this as a strategy. I just say like Facebook is recommending me to pay this amount of money, so I'm gonna pay half of what Facebook is telling. <laughs> so Facebook here, Facebook is telling me you should pay that's like uh, that's like six dollars. So I just pay three dollars per post engagement. That's it. <laughs> it's a good like a good way to decide how much to pay for 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 an ad. Now uh, you can optimize your ad for impressions or post engagement, and well, that's what I told you before. And let me show you the last, the last thing. Uh, you can click on ad scheduling. Yes. So, for example, if you are promoting an artist, uh, an electronic music artist, so electronic music most of the time is like you hear electronic music at night. You know, you don't listen at I don't know, like 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. or at 12 p.m. So if you're promoting there as artist, you're going to choose to only show your ads at night. You select, select it like that. And also you can select which days you want to promote that specific ad you're creating. So let's say you're creating an ad for like, hey, listen to my new hip hop single, yes? And it's a super upbeat single, yes? It's like a party single. Well, probably people is not going to be very open to it on Mondays, uh, Tuesday, Tuesdays, Wednesday, or Thursday, because they're ready to party on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, <laughs> yes? So I will, I, I will only show my ad on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's like a good option to choose. Well, now you have everything you need. Like, you have your say your target audience. You have where you're gonna show your uh, your ad. How much are you gonna spend, and in which time you're gonna show your ad. You can click on continue, and now uh, you just 
have two options. You can create a new ad, a new post, or you can promote a previous post. So in the case of the, what was the name? The Full Sailors of Orlando. We're going to select our fan page. Let me see. The Full Sailors of Orlando. Are you I have a bunch of Harley Quinn shirt? Yes, I have, yes, I have like a bunch of <laughs> different ads, yeah, different fan page. <laughs> um, so you click on the full sailors of Orlando. It's gonna show all of the posts uh, posts you have you have made. And in the case in this case, you want to promote the, the post about the Grammy. You just want you select it, and you click on place order. I'm not gonna click it because it's gonna charge me. So yeah, <laughs> you, just click, <laughs> you just click on place order, and it's gonna show you like it's gonna show you like. Are you sure you want to buy this? And then you click on yes, I'm sure I, I'm going to spend $3,000 on promoting my fan page, and that's all. Very cool. Then, exactly. Then, when that starts to deliver to the right people, you, you can see how well it, it is delivering on Ads Manager. You just click on the, on the left corner on Ads Manager. Ads Manager, and it's gonna show your your ads. Yes. So, for example, I made this ad a few days ago. Um, let me show you. I want to show you like a good ad. Mm. Don't pay attention to this. I'm doing something like <laughs> it doesn't matter. But wait a second. So, in this case, I I am promoting. Um, I'm selling like T-shirts online. So, uh, I made an ad for Harley Quinn fans. Yes. Uh, when you make the ad, you're gonna see if the ad is active, it's like it's delivering to the people. If it is blue, if you click on the ad. You're gonna see the breakdown of how many people clicked on the ad, how many money, how much money I have spent, and a bunch of different things. So, for example, here I have spent fifty-eight dollars, and I have received six purchases. Yes. In the case of the artists, uh, you will have like I have spent uh, I don't know twenty dollars, and six people from my target audience has had click on the ad. You can also uh, you can also see like the age of the people and the gender of the people that had clicked on the ad. So you just like that. And it shows that people like females from twenty five to thirty four years old have clicked more times on my ad. So I will start to create more ads for that kind of audience, and I will start to create more music for that kind of audience. I know it's a lot of content, like I have given you a lot of different like things, but if you have any questions, please ask. I have a question. Of course. Okay, so it says purchased down there, six people purchased. So what did you yeah. choose in order to know that they purchased? Was that a pixel type ad, or what did you do there? Oh yes, that's a pixel kind of ad, but okay. that's like not for the music industry. Yeah, yeah, that's yes. advanced and businessy. Okay. <laughs> yes. Rather than yes. Exactly. Yes, it, this is like this. This is because I'm selling stuff, but for artists, it won't show this this kind of. I mean, they ad. could, I guess, do um, ticket sales or or something or album sales, maybe. Definitely, definitely, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but but the pixel parts like too complicated, and I already yeah. gave too much information. So. Yeah, it's already been over an hour. <laughs> Thank you so much. What questions do you guys have? That was a lot of great information. That was like all the foundational stuff that you need to know. It's pretty amazing. Yes, like when I went to full set, like I learned a lot of valuable stuff, and super like I'm super grateful for everything. But being able to do Facebook ads was one of the things that has allowed, like, had allowed me to actually succeed in the music industry. Really. Mm -hmm. Like right now, all of the marketing in the music industry is based on this, on social media. So, like, this is actually what, like, what employers are gonna ask for you. 
or if you're an artist and you're trying to promote yourself, you're gonna do it to this to this channel. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool, yes. So if you have any questions, you can just reach me at this email. I'm gonna type it. Or you can add me um, to my Facebook. That's it. Oh, thank you so much, Juan. Thank you, thank yes. you, thank you. <laughs> that yes, was really yes, just, interesting. I know it's a lot of information, so really, if you if you want me to make a, another Skype session for you uh, in the future, I can help you. Like okay. If you're working with with some employer, or you are you're trying to promote yourself, I can do it for free for you guys. Like if you need, I can we can make a, a Skype session, and I can help you setting your first ad or whatever. Aw, you're too sweet, Juan. <laughs> Thank you. And and I have this recorded for them, so they can always watch it over too. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> wow. So All yes, right. you have my you have my email, you have my Facebook, and you have Brandy. So if you don't like, you can ask her for my information. And yes, just if if you're working with some artists someday, just ask me, and I will help you for Skype. We can we can create your first ads. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Juan. Well, I'm gonna grab them for a second before they go. But I'll let you go, and then I will hit you up in a few minutes and say hello. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Okay. And you have a wonderful rest of the day, but I'll contact you in a few minutes. I'll say hello. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> All right, you guys. I'm going to make myself a presenter. Okay, so you can all hear me okay, right? All right, so I just wanted to, uh, before... <laughs> Before you all go, um, did y'all have any questions about the newsletter assignment or anything? I usually review that on here, but um, I wanted to do that guest speaker event instead. So, anybody have any questions? I'm going to take a screenshot of uh, the attendance here. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. Um, I can't get it in my email. Says it's sent to my email, but I never received it. That's really strange, Dan. Um, I, I don't know why you did a test email. You did, you did a test. I've I've never seen that happen before. Did you check your spam or or maybe a different tab? Huh. I'm going to turn you guys off of mute. I'm going to unmute, unmute you all. If you want to mute yourself real quick, you can. Um, so, oh, it looks like just Kez and Karen. The rest of you have yourself on mute. Um, huh. Yeah, that's really interesting, Daniel. I've never seen that before, so I'm not sure what to tell you there, um, other than just take a screenshot from the inside, I guess, when you're in the platform. Yeah, that's what I was going to it even says like delivered. I could take a screenshot of that, but I don't know why it's. I know it said Gmail can have problems with the sending, but I didn't. I never experienced that before. I don't know. It's being weird. Um. So you're in Gmail. Did you go to promotions and social? Um. Because sometimes, like, um, you know how you have the three tabs now on Gmail. Sometimes when I get my emails from my own autoresponder, it goes into promotions. Yeah, it's in there. I didn't even think about looking in there. I was just, I'm stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, all right, cool. I'm glad you found it. <laughs> all right. All right, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, anybody else have any questions about the newsletters? Um, do y'all want me to look at anything for you guys? Or, you know, or do y'all want to do it on Monday when we get into class? Y'all feel pretty all right? Okay. You're okay. All right. I think you're good. Okay. <laughs> all right, you guys. All right. Well, um, thanks so much for joining uh, me and Juan today. Uh, 
you know, that was, that was a lot of really good information. He put together a nice presentation for you guys. So I'm going to put it on the platform. I'm going to put it under announcements and that way you can always like go back and rewatch it this semester. Um, I'm not sure how long you have access to the class, uh, but maybe you could even like download it if you wanted to keep it. I don't really know how that works, but we could figure it out. I can even drop box it to you if you wanted it, a copy of it. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to turn off the recording and I guess y'all have a wonderful rest of the weekend and I will see you Monday evening. All right. Bye for now, you guys. <laughs>